but don't do what I did and make an uh, extremely steep zip line. <laughs> because you will, you will get hurt when you hit the ground or your wall if you've mounted it to a wall. So keep that in mind. Fireflies in the sky. I can build twice as high. So get down here. You make it clear. It's passion time now. Passion time now. Whoa. I'm not just small. I'm tiny. This is freaking awesome. What up? It's Tiny Pirate Gaming, and in this video, I'm going to be going over 10 of the biggest changes in the ground of February update 7.0. It's really 0.7.0. .0. some other numbers. But anyway, let's go! Number 10. So now, when you're wearing your gas mask and you go into some poison gas, like you go into the haze or you shoot your poison arrow down and you try to hide in it while the bugs attack you and they die in the gas, your gas mask is going to take damage. So be aware of that, you know, be, be aware. Now also, there was a glitch when they installed the February update 7.0 point, you know, all those, all those numbers. When they installed that, if you had any gas masks in the world that you, that you loaded up, everything took damage for some reason. Even, even ones in chests that weren't in, that weren't in the haze or anything, they took damage. So. You know, I, I, I did some tests, and the ones in your inventory do not take damage, so you can carry one and swap it out. But the the one you're wearing will take damage, so be aware. Number nine. They made some terrain changes. The most notable one is over on the pond side of the oak tree. They added they added some grass. So if you're building over there, it's a little bit easier now to gather grass. Are they going to add any more grass? Are they going to add more flowers? Are they going to add all sorts of stuff? You never know. The terrain could change at any time, so be aware of that. They also, speaking of you know the floor, speaking of the ground, your floors of grass are now flat. And if you had stuff on top of them, they might glitch through the floor a little bit. But now, well, we'll be getting to that in just a little bit. Number eight. You don't have to go into your inventory anymore when you want to eat stuff. If you got stuff you're cooking on the roasting spit or you find stuff on the ground like the acorn bits, you can just hold down the grab button and you'll eat it. Eat it right on the spot and you don't have to go into your inventory and that is a wonderful, wonderful little feature that they added. Also, another feature they added was the eat, drink, or die meter. So... Now, if you're not eating or drinking, this meter's gonna pop up, and if you don't eat or drink before it runs out, well, you're gonna you're gonna die. So make sure you got something to eat and something to drink. I recommend Puncho brand juice box, but that's just that's just me, you know. Fill your little canteen with some Puncho, and you're good to go. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Bring it. Where's the number? Number seven. Proximity crafting. So so you can proximity craft if you're in like a workshop and you got all sorts of boxes with all sorts of stuff in them. Depending on where you're standing or depending on where you place your work bench, you will have access to craft things from the resources that you have in those crates. So that's that's a great system. But the repair system isn't isn't working at launch. So they said in the dev stream that they're working on a hot fix, so hopefully we get the hot fix soon. That'd be real nice. Um, but so it, it, this system, though, the repair system now, you don't really need the armor glue anymore. So if you stocked up on armor glue, it's a relic. It's a relic of the ancient grounded days. And you should store it away so that you can show people like, look, this is a relic of the ancient days. You no longer need this to repair your armor. We've bypassed the process of needing the armor glue and installed using the resources directly. But you still need port site to repair your weapons and tools. So keep that in mind. You still got to farm that. Still get on that. You will need it to repair your stuff. And now you need lots of stuff to repair your stuff. So get out there. Start exploring. Number six. The, the wall-mounted zipline anchors. This is a great addition. You can place these things on the walls so that you can 
have zip line anchors on things without having to run the stems all over the place. You don't have to gather a bunch of stems. You can just craft this and attach it to walls that you have already built. And it's a great little feature that's been added to the game. So hooray for that. And you can also zip line your stems and grass planks now, just like we, we usually do when we would slide it on top of it. But now it's like a system in the game. So that's great. It's great. So your catchment systems are still operational with a little rework. You can make it even more efficient. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. But but don't do what I did and make an uh, extremely steep zip line. <laughs> because you will, you will get hurt when you hit the ground. Or your wall, if you've mounted it to a wall. So keep that in mind. Number five. So a bunch of the menus are going to look a little bit different. The map has been expanded from some of the darkened zones have now been... You know, features have been added to them. They look a little bit different. The storage has been altered. When you look in inside of a chest, it will now appear on the right and your inventory will appear on the left. And it looks like maybe they're planning to do an expansion of the storage, which would be super awesome, you know? Fingers crossed. Hopefully we get that. But they also changed the biometrics page. So if you look at that, now it will show your active perks, which is which is a really nice feature. So you know what all your perks are doing and what your armor is doing and how it's all you know interacting together. So you can make really cool builds if you really pay attention to the biometrics and all the perks you're getting. Finally, the trail markers and the chests now have new icons and new colors. So you can switch it up a little bit. You can make it a little bit different when you're labeling your bases or you're labeling your chests inside of your bases if you have a lot of them. I have a lot of them. I got to build more, though. I can't stop. Number four. Just like the plant fiber you can put into the spinning wheel to get a one-for-one -one into crude rope, now you can do the same with berry chunks. You hang them on your jerky rack, and you can get a one-to-one -one ratio of your input-to-output ratio will be one-to-one. -one and you can get a lot more berry leather this way by using your jerky rack. So build a bunch of jerky racks, go get a bunch of berry chunks, and you can get like a crap biscuit load of berry leather really fast. And you just, just do it one day, plop them up there, go to sleep at night, you wake up the next morning, there you go. You're good to go on berry leather for building all, all sorts of stuff, building all sorts of stuff. But we should be able to eat the berry chunks. I'm just gonna throw that in here there. But uh, also, speaking of eating, you can now get the cookies and the apples and the hot dogs and whatever seasonal things they like to throw in there with the updates, which I think is actually really cool. Um, you can get them. They spawn more frequently, so that's great if you haven't been able to find them. And I'm one of the players who hasn't been able to find them for a very long time. And now they are spawning in, and, you know, that's awesome. Hooray! Thank you, Obsidian. It's great. Moving on to the next one. Bring in the numbers. Number three. The bees, the bees have new attacks. They can shake pollen around and they can try to bite your head off. I think when they shake the pollen around though, it should put the pollen into the ground like it was around the pond during the earlier versions of the game. Uh, I think that was really cool and that would be a cool way to, you know, spread the pollen around. Like when the bee does that attack, pollen like three or four of those pollen balls fall to the ground. I think that would be really cool. The Weevil Shield, its durability has been slightly boosted, but it's not, it, I still, it's still not good enough for me. I still prefer to use the weapon because the weapons and the tools still seem to have a higher durability than the shield. And I don't think that should be the case. It's a shield, it should be stronger. Then they made a smokescreen grenade called the Shinobi Sneeze. The Shinobi Sneeze is basically an evasion bomb and it worked great for me in the public test server against the Bombardier Beetle. But when I tried it in the 7.0 version, once the full update was dropped, against the Wolf Spider, it didn't turn out so well. So I don't know if it was me or if it was just not working right or if the Wolf Spider just, you know, it, it doesn't work on Wolf Spider. It can hear you. It can sense you. It's a more powerful enemy, but it does work maybe on the smaller ones. I ran out of them. I, I, didn't, I didn't have any more. 
They also made some other combat changes, like the player stagger animation is a little bit different, and I believe some of the enemy attack patterns are changed. So, might be a good time to practice that block timing, build those lean twos, get out there, fight a wolf spider, get used to their new attacks because I did not fare so well. I did not fare so well my first time encountering the wolf spider in 7.0, and I realized that something was off. Something was off. And it's their attack patterns. They're different. I, I forgot to mention that you can also dig up larva now. So if you're digging for grubs, you might also dig up a larva. And I'm using footage from the public test server when the larva were tiny in size. And I kind of like that. I kind of thought that was cool. And I would like to see more size variation within the, within the biomes, within the you know, populations of all the creatures that roam around the backyard. Anyway, moving on. Number two. And there were a lot of fixes. There were a lot of fixes like the fireflies. They fix the fireflies. They don't just fly around in the sky anymore. They, uh, they come down. They come down to the ground now, and it was really cool. I caught them coming down right at dusk. It was really awesome. And then I went over, and I got some bio bioluminescent goop because I needed that. They also fixed the pebblet foundations. They, they no longer have collision issues. They will snap and... Build, you can build them anywhere. You can build them all over the place. Build them all over the place. But they cost more. They cost more now. So, you know, be aware. They also fixed the thumbnails. Some some people, like me, were experiencing, like, glitchy save thumbnails. And, you know, they fixed those. So, hooray. Now, that being said, the anthill is still laggy. There, I get these weird screen glitches in menus sometimes when my screen's, like, freaking out. <laughs> The mussel sprouts in the pond lab take a while to spawn in. Like, you got to be real close to them for them to spawn in. I don't know what's up with that. What's the deal with that? Uh, the floor, if you have a tower and you're looking in the windows, the weed stem windows, and you see your floor, your grass floor from the bottom, it's like it's 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 like a disco in there. Now, like, I, don't, I don't mind that cool, like, like, a cool effect like that, but not not glitchy like that. You know, not, not from glitches, but from like something we can build, like a, a disco ball from some sort of creature that emits that sort of light. I don't know. I don't know how you do that. Anyway, there I also experienced this dripping dirt in the Oak Lab. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Is there eventually going to be like water flowing down there? That would be kind of cool. Like it's it's leaking or something. Maybe maybe it's leaking raw S -s 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 science. Anyway, number one. So this feature is really cool. This feature is really awesome, and that's you can move your furniture pieces now, your chests, your crates, your baskets, your beds, your your even your pallets of weed stems, and your and your um um dew collectors, and and your smoothie makers, and your jerky racks, and everything. You can move everything except like structuring you can't move foundations you can't move walls you can't move floors but you can move furniture so that's awesome they also added a whole bunch of new awesome build content and i'm just going to go through it real quick the firefly lantern it only turns on at night it's really awesome the half floors they make for great shelving so you can put your chest on them and make awesome shelving now that doesn't stick out too far like the shelving we were doing before any grounded builders Everyone knows what I'm talking about if you play Grounded. If you're new to Grounded, well, or if you haven't been there in a while, well, they're really, you know, it's really fun. These are really great for your storage shed. They also added the head mounts for the mosquito, the bee, and the firefly, so you can show off your hunts, you know, all your epic hunts and your battles you survived. You can show them off. They added some stair railings for the stairs, and you can also put them on the, the um, roof to make ramps with railing, both, both Sprig and Acorn. The recipes are the same as the usual railings they added stem brackets also triangular stem brackets and you can make awesome balconies and all sorts of crazy cool designs with those i hope they add in walling that we can cover the scaffolding with that's angled the same way as the scaffolding i'm just gonna throw that in there they added the stem floors which i've been waiting for i i knew at some point they would show up i just had a feeling and now they're there and I'm really happy for that because I needed that to build something. They also added the Acorn Spiral Staircase, which I believe is possibly 
one of the best looking things you can build right now in the game. It's it's beautiful and you can make awesome cool designs with it. And I really am glad it's in there because I didn't expect to get anything like this. And the fact that we got it. What we need though is we need stem stairs that are completely stem, no grass. We need triangular stem walls and we need the triangular walls to be able to fit up underneath of the railings when we put them on the stairs or on the roofs as ramps. That would be really cool uh, if you know anyone from Obsidian gets a chance to check out the video. You know, hopefully, hopefully somebody does. Then I'm gonna add on one more. This is like a special add-on, number eleven. You know, number eleven. You also have to climb the thistle plants now to get the thistle needles. You can't just get the thistle needles by smacking it with your axe. You have to climb up on the leaves and physically pull the pull the needles off. I like this because it's it's got a lot of immersion quality to it. And when you're gathering resources is usually when your attention is drawn to something else. And that's when stuff like wolf spiders sneak up on you and mosquitoes can just swarm in on you. And that actually happened to me in a brand new game and they chased me into the mysterious machine. And if you want to see that, well, well, I mean, you can follow me on Twitter because that's where I upload all sorts of crazy stuff that happens to me randomly while I'm playing Grounded. Um, so go ahead and check that out. But that's pretty much it. That's the end of the video. That's all I had to cover. That's all the new stuff. And I'm sure I missed a few things. But if you want to check out for yourself, you can go ahead and check out the patch notes. I'm pretty sure I put a link in the description. Then also, if you enjoyed the video and you learned some stuff and you want to see more you know tiny pirate gaming content about grounded because that's what i do on my channel well you should smash that like button i really appreciate that if you would do that it would be doing me a huge favor and you know it would, it would mean a lot to me and if you smash that like button why don't you let me know in the comments say hey tiny pirate what up i smashed your like button hashtag tiny crew and you can join the hashtag tiny crew by smashing the subscribe button as well and then ringing that little bell and if you want the full Tiny Pirate Crew experience. You should really also follow me on Twitter, like I mentioned before. I'm sure, I'm sure that's somewhere. Link in the description. And you, you want to come hang out with with Tiny Pirate while I play Grounded, and you want to talk about some Grounded. I also like anime. I also like movies. I also like anything fun. All sorts of fun, awesome, amazing stuff. Comic books, all that stuff. I know all about it. We can talk about it. Whatever you want to bring up, pop in, pop in the chat. Bring it up. We talk about all sorts of stuff while I'm playing Grounded, or we just talk about Grounded because I love this game, and I love talking about it, I love giving them suggestions, I love telling them when something's not working right so they can fix it, because I want this game to be like 1,001%, 1,001% amazing. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and until next time... Arg, matey, watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here.